podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by AOL Music and Spinner.com, where you can get free MP3s, exclusive interviews, and more. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1047 for Tuesday, March 16th, 2010. Car MD. And now, get ready for Dick. Hey, it's 60 Bartolo, Mads, Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One day of the week, it's time for Leo to do something crappy, but it's different today. <laughs> we heard it's something good on Turn the Table to How are you? How are you? Good to see you. I am absolutely fine. I am so excited because two weeks in a row, last week you did the Sanyo mini, mini, oh, mini, yes. mini, 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 And I've been little. playing with that, and it's fairly, really good camera. Really HD good quality. camera, yeah. and today you have the automobile oil water separator. So tell us about that. <laughs> no, no, no. This is no, something... No, no, no. Called the Car MD. I oh, okay. It, I have it right here. This is actually, you know, uh, we did MacWorld uh, Expo uh, this month. Uh, actually, it was okay. last month. Uh, did the MacWorld Live thing. And one of the nice things about being a speaker at MacWorld Expo is there's a goodie bag that you get every year filled with stuff, software, Ooh. and hardware. And this was this was one of the things that came in the goodie bag. It's called Car MD, uh, and it is a device that plugs into a special socket, and the socket is on every car that's come out since 1996, which is... That's, yeah, down by the steering wheel, right? Yeah, you've seen it. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know you knew that. The, the device kind of looks like a taser a little bit. Here, let me... Uh, I have it uh, hooked up to my computer now, because what happens is, it's very simple. You connect it to that socket that's uh, is usually under the steering wheel on the driver's side, but sometimes on some cars, it's uh, behind the ashtray. There are different places that they put it. And they if you go to the CarMD site, carmd.com, they, they tell you where to look. But this kind of, it looks a little bit like a, I don't know, a handheld taser. It's got the socket at the top that plugs in uh, to the socket in your car. Uh, then you turn the key in your car. You don't turn it on, you just turn the key in, uh, the car on, and it beeps four times after about a minute. That means it's downloaded all the data from your car's computer. Now, you take it back to your computer, and this is Mac or Windows, and that's, I guess, one of the reasons they were at Mac World is because they have a Mac version, which is kind of unusual for some of this kind of car stuff. And you hook it up to the USB key, uh, USB port, and log into your account at carmd.com. It's free to create the account at carmd.com. And then it tells me my vehicle's health. So uh, ah. it knows, it, but I gave it the VIN number when you first create the account so it knows what car it is. It says your engine's computer system indicates no problem codes with the engine, the admissions. The check engine light is off. If it came on, by the way, this would be a very handy way for figuring out uh, what's going on. The different codes, ready for emission test, ready. Available technical service bulletins, none. Available safety recalls, none. Also, Leo, it sent the weight of your car to my Twitter account. It says you weigh 3 million pounds. This is so cool. <laughs> it, it shows you all of the uh, different information here. And, it, you know, depending on... So, Leo, you, you, you plug it into your car just for like 30 seconds? It takes or about a minute to download this. No, oh, it, doesn't so it doesn't stay, stay there. No, no, because okay. the car is recording stuff, apparently. I didn't know this. Um, so it goes into the car and gets that information, stores it on its uh, on itself, and then when you connect this up via USB, it'll tell you uh, what the uh, information. Oh, so this is. is like a whole version of what your mechanic uses. Ex well, exactly. Now oh. you know I have a Ford with a Sync, and so Sync does a vehicle health report too, and I think much of this is sent to me uh, at the in the vehicle health report. So I don't know if you have Sync or a car that does this automatically. You probably don't need it. But I thought this was very cool for those people with very older nice. cars or cars that don't have this. 
um, uh, like Ford Sync. I thought this was uh, very cool. It's called Car MD. Now, it's a little pricey. It's $100. Um, but there is a money-back guarantee for 30 days. If, if it doesn't work with your car, you don't like it. Uh, it doesn't give you any information. It comes with a you software know, that's, disc. That's really not so bad. Oh, no, no. Hundred... Given what it's doing, it's pretty impressive. Um, it has a little carrying case, a little pouch. comes with a cable that you need. Software is uh, on a disc in the in the box. So it's a very complete solution. And now, I guess Leo, if it finds something wrong, does it suggest what to do about it? You got me because my car is perfect. Oh, yes, it does. It tells you it, it can tell you what the vehicle code means. It can uh, tell you what the fix will be. It'll even give you estimated repair costs. So you kind of have a oh. sense of for your particular make and model what it might cost to uh, get it fixed. Nice. So it's so kind of that, yeah, it's yeah. a handy handy uh, little tool, and uh, there is a database uh, on the website with they say tens of thousands of real life fixes from ASE certified automotive technicians. So if 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 it reads something wrong, it can tell you. The device itself has two hundred fifty six megs of RAM in it. I'm sorry, that's is that right? No, I guess that's how much it needs. You need for the uh, software. I'm sorry. So right, it'll work on, on any computer. car. It will work with all nineteen ninety six and newer. OBD2 compliant cars. That's what that connector is. So that's almost all cars, light uh, trucks, minivans, SUVs, and foreign and domestic since 1996. And uh, I just, I, yeah, I think if you're somebody who likes information, likes geeky stuff, or maybe just wants to know a little bit about your car before you bring it in, this would be very handy. It's the CarMD at CarMD.com. I like it. I do. I do these because I figure you don't have a car, and so uh, this isn't going to no, work. No, that's a very good idea. Yeah, it's just it's just a little something. Uh, something only I can do. That and the upchuck, and and I, I'm just I'm taking that business. Now, oh, we have so many good letters. I've been get people have been sending me letters. I guess they felt sorry because of my letter drought. Yeah. This, and it also, did you get the email from Dan Luters? You know, should I play the uh, Lost Gizwiz jingles? Well, you know, I, we'll play one before you read a letter. Pl pl yeah, play right. a different. He found a bunch of, of jingles that I, I never heard before. I, I don't, don't know if he didn't think they were good enough or... or maybe he's making more and not telling us. This is this that is one be. called Chant. Pretty, uh, you know, if we ever get a letter from the uh, an email from the Vatican, when the Pope be, calls, we'll be ready. When the Pope calls, that we'll save that for him. Now this one's called Bing. Oh, this is nice. Here come the letters, those lovely letters. Here come the Giswiz letters. Now. I love it. Oh, damn! You are too good. Oh, we're we're Isn't using that, that one. Yeah. Holy and there's cow. one more. You want to do them all? There's yeah, this one, is the 60s what... one. Oh, this is good too. He's so talented. I I think he's teasing us when he says these are long lost. These are these he'd made some more. We got an endless supply now. <laughs> That guy is too darn talented. <laughs> it's great. Isn't he is it? so good. I, I just love the fact that we do a show and that people do websites and searches and themes. It's just great. It's just great. It's great. He, he's incredible. Yeah. Um. So thank you. Now Dan do you Luders. have a letter after eight themes? I, I do, but I mean that's oh, okay. I just. I'm blown away by these yeah. wonderful themes. Thank you so much, Danny. He's so talented. Uh, and we'll add those to the, the collection. Pretty soon you won't hear the same letters jingle twice in two weeks, I think. It's amazing. I know. And now, soon it'll be time to bring back the Christmas jingle, too. Practically. We'll have <laughs> yeah. Practically. 
So this is actually an important uh, security update. No, first sent this along. Another uh, regular. Uh, okay, good emailer. because I was going to read that, but I'm glad you are. Yeah, yeah. No, good. I think we need to read yep. this one. It's from Ofer yep. Bannery and Laguna G Niguel. He's a regular reader and writer. Uh, I don't, he's not reading us. He's reading something else, but he is reading. Uh, he says, Dick and Leo, I think you'll want to report to your listeners that, quote, according to researchers at U.S. CERT, that's the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, software that accompanies the Energizer Duo USB battery charger contains a Trojan horse that gives hackers access to a Windows PC. What? Now, you did uh, a review of the Duo USB a few episodes, well, quite a few episodes back. Oh, long, you know, I looked at it, <clears throat> I think it was June uh, 2008. Yeah, it was episode 506, and they don't sell this anymore. No, <clears throat> so, but, I think they sell the unit, but I believe you went to their website. I don't think the software came with the unit, but if you uh, wanted your computer to keep track of how much juice was in the batteries and how long the battery should stay in the charger, it could do that on your computer. So if you just bought it and have been using it uh, without the software, there's no worry. But if you downloaded the software, you should get rid of the software. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Energizer says we have no idea how this got inserted in the software. Uh, the Windows, it doesn't affect the Mac, only Windows PCs. When the Windows software included with the charger... Uh, is installed. Oh, it says included, it says okay. included with the charger. It, it creates the file arucer.dll. That's actually a Trojan horse that listens for commands on port 7777. And hackers can issue commands to this Trojan, which can download and execute files, transmit files stolen from the PC, modify the Windows registry. It automatically runs every time the computer is turned on and remains active even if the Energizer charger is not attached. If you now, according to U.S. Cert, if you uninstall the Energizer software, that will disable uh, automatic execution of the Trojan. Or you can look for arucer.dll in your Windows System 32 directory and remove it, and that will effectively fix it. You'll see uh, posts on this from Semantic and Cert, and I would assume that antivirus software will be looking for it. Uh, just bizarre. Now, uh, Isn't it? I, no one knows how this happened. Remember, there was a digital picture frame about a year ago that had a TAC code in it. Apple iPods at one point had some bad software on it. And other companies, Seagate, I think this has happened to. But uh, how do they get... You know, this stuff is made in China. Maybe a bad guy got into the factory and snuck this stuff into the software. Spooky. Spooky. Oh, spook. Can I read one more? Oh, yeah. One more from Randall Schwartz, our good friend. About oh, Randall. Our, oh, him. He's the host of our um, uh, Floss Weekly show about open source. And we were talking about the Killisode, episode 1024. That's why I want to get this one in there, because we're, we're rapidly reaching episode 15,000, so it's about time. <laughs> he said, uh, in early in episode 1024, Leo said, like a kilometer. Wait a minute. No, that's a thousand. You pointed out the ambiguity of kilo, mega, and giga with respect to computer stuff. Are these powers of 10, 3, 6, and 9, respectively, or powers of 2, 10, 20, and 30, respectively? It makes quite, quite a difference when you get up to those largest no numbers like giga. He says, there is a solution, though, uh, not widely used. If you go to Wikipedia and you read up on the kibibyte, the, not the kilobyte, K-I-B-I, -I, kibibyte, turns out that if you want to kind of disambiguate between kilobit and kibibit, for instance, yeah, a kilobit would be a thousand bits. A kibibit would be 1,024, the binary 1,000. So if somebody's kind of encouraging, I guess, this new word, kibba. So a ki it wouldn't have been our kilosode. Our thousandth episode would have been our kilosode. Our 1,024th episode would have been our kibisode. And, oh, okay. And this would be our put you to sleep episode. Yeah, this is the Nodcast <laughs> that Jen was talking about. And I thought she was joking. Never ask a programmer for an explanation of anything. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Randall. That, that's, that's good to know that there is a word, kibba. And uh, these are, if we, if we go with the kibba, by the way, you have to change everything as well. You know, right now we have kilobyte megabyte 
gigabyte, terabyte, and I don't know if you know this, but soon we'll be seeing petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, and yottabytes. That's what comes next. Really? So they're proposing... Well, I want to be here when we do our yottabyte <laughs> episode. Our yottabyte episode will be a fairly large number. It's 10 to the 24th. Okay. Oh, you know, I'm out that day. Do you have another time we can do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometime in the 58th century. So he's proposing, or they're proposing, whoever's, whoever's crazy idea this is, yeah. is to use kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, and so on for decimal prefixes, 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the 6th, 10 to the ninth, And for binary numbers, use kibabyte, mebabyte, gibabyte, tebabyte, pebabyte, exabyte, exbabyte, <laughs> zebabyte, and yababyte. Okay, I got that. I'm going to be right back, back after this yep. bird from our message from us, babonsers. I don't think that's going to fly. Kill it. Kibabite, mebabite, gibibabite, gibibite, tibabite, pebabite, exabite. And who gives a bite? I don't give a bite. Dick, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be here. D A I L Y. It's the day.